Okay, so I'm going to do a watercolour demonstration, but to start with, well, I think it's a good idea to look at some kind of inspiration. So we're going to look at the work of John Piper. Um, as you can see, his watercolours are quite dark, quite loose. That's the sort of thing I think is worth going for. And also you can note here, he uses old crayons, wax resist effect in there, which I think is brilliant. Um, it's another one of his famous pieces, quite loose again, but there was a sense of accuracy in there. And there's some like heightened areas with white. We may or may not do that today. So you need to find yourself a decent picture. An old ruin, ruin is great. So I'm going to go for this one because there's not going to be a lot of drawing involved in this mainly painting. So put that to one side. And you can either sketch out in pencil first or if you're feeling brave, you can just go straight for it. Now I'm going to do it in pen, mainly because I prefer drawing in pen. Uh, you have to just live with your mistakes. Whereas if you are doing pencil, you can rub out and I just like to get the thing done. So it's quite loose. So remember it's a, a ruin, so that's fine. The reason I like painting ruins is because it can give you a little bit more freedom really. It doesn't really matter if things go a little bit wrong. So it's rather than just being like a human camera, you can just add a little bit more to your work. So there we go. So roughly like that. Keeping it quite loose. So you've got some like plant life and stuff here. I may or may not bring that in or it might just end up as a little bit of a colour. So up here, there's a bit of a tree. I may not do the tree. So this is like a water-based pen. So if I add water to it, it breaks up that line. So you won't really have this heavy line in the end. You're just going to have a little bit of tone. I may go back over and redraw into certain areas, but I've got enough there to start now. Um, so the thing to do next is if you want to use wax resist, at certain areas, I've just got these, these kids Wax crayons. You just put a little bit in in a few places just to give it a little bit of texture where you think you might want to protect certain areas but once you've put it on you can't take it off again so you have to remember that. Um, so I'm just going to put a few areas of green in. Up here. A few bits down here. You can add more later on. But I just, just to keep it loose I want to get a few scribbles in there. Okay. So the next thing you want to get your watercolours and it's probably a really good idea to clean them before you actually use them. These haven't been cleaned but I'm just going to put a load of water on there getting that colour softened. It's a good idea to do this before you start the drawing. Always a good idea to have a paper towel with you. I've got none of these things with me today but never mind. We'll carry on. So you want a quite a big brush, probably not that big but that's okay for backgrounds. Uh, this one is a good one. This one for detail, if you want to put any detail in there. I'm probably going to go straight in with this one. This is a... I don't know what it is. Number six, there we go. Okay. So, I'll show you what I mean. If I just kind of just got water into this straight away, you can see that that bleeds already. So that's fine. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do... Um, a little bit of the stonework, so I'm going to use like a yellow ochre. Okay, and you want to try and keep your paint nice and clean. So what I'm doing here, I'm just going to clean my paints a little bit because they seemed a bit, whoever used them last, made them a bit dirty. I won't be using the white, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just wiping off any murk or any other colours that are on there. So that these colours can be nice and fresh or as fresh as I can get them. It's always a good idea to have like two cups of water. One for washing your brush and one for actually using to blend. Okay. So I'm going to go for a kind of yellow ochre for most of this up here. I'm going to whack that in there. Now you can sort of see, if you've got cheap paints, and these are quite cheap, that the pigment is separating, which isn't 
that nice. But we will soldier on. Um, so in there, I'm probably going to use a little bit of blue. Keep it all really loose at this point. It's always a good idea as well when you're doing um, watercolours to have a hairdryer as well because obviously the paint's very wet, it takes ages to dry. So I keep that really, really loose. There. Yeah. I'm now going to use like a slightly darker brown with some of the yellow ochre just to go in here. You've got that kind of colour going on. I'm quite happy if it all runs, to be fair. And inside there, I'm not going to use black. I won't ever use black really. What I'll be mixing up is a kind of dark blue, like an ultramarine, and a brown, and that gives me a nice, it's like Payne's grey. So in here, that's what I've mixed up there. Just popping that in. Now I'll probably go back over that later with um, my black pen. I said I wouldn't use black, I've just made paint really. Now this black pen is quite nice because when you um, paint with it, it separates all the colours out so it's not really black anymore. So again with the green, so we're going to move on to some greens here. And I don't want to just use one green, I'm using both greens together. I've got a dark green, I've got a light green. I'm just going to sort of splash those on a little bit, quite loosely. And this is where my green that I've already put down works quite well. Okay, that comes down there. I'm going to use more of the bright green. But I have to say these cheap paints that I'm using are horrible. So it's quite a challenge. I think it's important to not overwork these as well. So. you're serious about watercolours you should buy a decent set I mean I'm not sure how much that set you back but you probably get a half decent set for £15 or something like that these ones that I'm using are just kids ones right so it doesn't get too murky going to uh, let it dry a little bit okay and while you wait for that to dry you could always put a little bit of sky in there just loosely again maybe you want to use a sort of bigger brush for this I don't know so I'm keeping it really really loose a bit of blue you can let some of those other colors run in if you want you can use the side of your brush you might get a nice bit of texture Depends how sketchy you want it to be. If you want it more precise, then paint it more precisely. But I just let all that run. Let, I mean, let it just kind of r sort of mix on its own. Those colours should just do their own thing. So I might bring in a little bit more green as well. So, so you might, if you're concentrating, if you want to do something with the foreground, then you'd probably use a slightly darker green here. At this point, I'm just going to keep it really light okay so it just kind of doesn't look like anything at this point which is fine you just let it all run it's almost like an undercoat and this is where you would now go off and get your hair dry So if there are any areas that you think are too strong, just get yourself a paper towel or a tissue or a toilet roll or anything, lift out some of that colour. Okay. You can sort of see if I lift that up. You can see where some of the colour is the pigment is separating out. It's kind of the sign of a cheap watercolour. It'll be alright in the end though, for what we're doing. I mean these paints are fine for if you're just going out sketching, you want to do a really quick sketch. So remember this is what we're trying to achieve. It looks nothing like that yet. So there's something. So we're going to let that dry. OK, 
Okay, so it's a bit dry now. There's a few little puddles here. I'm going to lift those up with some tissue. So the next thing, this is where you can go back in your pen if you want to. Start adding some more details up here from like the little flint stones I've got here. So quite loose. Again, there's some like grass growing over there. These bits, bits of shadow. So this is where you sort of start tightening up, drawing a little bit. And you can add, for instance, in there, I want that to be really dark. So if that's dry, you can really go into that with your pen. Or you can do the pencil. So that's really, really dark. And you can sort of see straight away that it brings a little bit more back to the the drawing. Okay, down there is quite loose. Some plants over here. So I will add more paint as well in a bit, but I'm just gonna really tighten this up now. So it gives more of an impression. So you know it, it isn't about realism this, it's more like a an impression of what's there, a sketch. Which is great if you don't have a lot of time, if you've got a busy life, you can just do a little bit of this. And do it in like 15, 20 minutes. And move on with your life. Again, I'm not sort of like painstakingly drawing every brick. And again, I'm putting some of them in that I think are important. That help show the structure of the building or what's left of the structure and any bits that are, are too heavy there's a few bits I don't like on here I'll wash over in a bit I will not see them that's quite dark there now what should happen with this pen is that I start adding water, I'm going to probably mix in a bit of colour with it as well. I'm not going to bother this tree up here, there's supposed to be a tree up here. I don't want to do that. So I'm keeping that loose. Keep that sort of sketchy feel alive there. I mean, I wouldn't use a ruler at all for any of this. You've got to be careful if there are some areas that are still wet on this because it could ruin your pen. If that does happen, just put it on a bit of tissue. It will dry out. So, okay. So now back in with the brush. I'm sticking with this brush here. It's number six or nine, depending. Anyway, it's quite a big brush. So now I just want to do these darker areas with this green. So I'm getting some green. You can always add a little bit of blue in with the green, which is what I've done here. Probably too much blue now. Back to the green. And you've got to be careful that the paint's not too opaque. This is quite opaque now because these are cheap paints. And it's quite heavy. And I would like to be able to see the paper through it so it's translucent. No matter. We'll do what we can. So I can add a bit more water to that now and just let it bleed out a little bit. So now I'm going to some lighter green for the top here. Again, trying to keep that quite loose. This is where the um, wax is really useful because if I overdo any of my painting, I can't overdo the wax bits because they're going to remain nice and bright. Lovely. So keep that loose there. There's a few bits of grass up here as well. I'm going to darken that up just with some water. So we're turning that back into like paint rather than a line. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush up. And 
Kitchen looks very clean. Could use a tiny bit of blue in your brush if you want, and just go down on the side to pick up a little bit of texture. Okay, so you think back to that John Piper thing. Let's go back a quick look. So you look at his, it's quite dark, and there's like textures and things on there. It's going to go for some of that. Yeah. So. I'm probably not going to go as dark as his because he's used like really dark backgrounds, but I probably could get a stronger blue in the background. And I'm using the side of my brush. And I want to keep those kind of brush strokes. I want it to look you know, sketchy. So mixing a couple of blues in there. So it's coming together now, a bit nicer. Um, Light green at the bottom, side of my brush, so it's quite sketchy. You can get a few little flicks of green up there. This is where you end up working on lots of bits of your painting all in one go rather than just one area and getting it finished. So over here. I've decided with this picture I'm not going to bother about what's in the background. Don't really, I'm not really interested. I'm not going to do too much of the foreground here. Just a little bit there. I'm just going to keep it really loose. Just sort of see there was something there. I was like, I'll bring the other picture back up in a minute. You can see. Again, if you want to give the impression of grey, some of that flintstone is kind of grey. Just use a bit of blue and sort of dab it on with your brush. I'm trying to keep the bricks all going in the same sort of direction. And you're probably going to need to give it another blast with the hairdryer at this point. Strengthen that up. So, okay, so you can sort of see a lot of the paint is quite is welling up there. But, you know, it's looking okay. It's got a nice kind of feel about it. Nice sketch. So back with the head, right. Right, so that's dry now. I can just see if I want to add in any more detail with the pen. A few more little dots there. Okay, may just tighten that up a bit there. Down there, I might bring in a little bit here. Give that leaves and things there. But that is pretty much it. I'm not going to do too much to that now. So it's a really loose little sketch. It's not perfect and it's not meant to be. But it, it's quite good fun, it's enjoyable. Uh, this is obviously what we were trying to do. Something like that. They obviously look completely different. But the essence of it is there, you can sort of see what I was aiming for. Okay. Probably there's certain areas that could be darker on that. Um, but then you've got to be careful to make it too dark because then you end up having a, quite a dark picture. And you want to keep your watercolors nice and bright. That's pretty much how you do it. So really just experiment with it, don't overwork it, keep it nice and fun and light, and then move on and do another one. It is what it is. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.